All right, let's uh, let's talk about a few bills. Um, why don't I just dive into the more controversial ones? H two thirty is uh, the, the title of the bill is, is uh, that it's anti suicide, uh, based on the idea that uh, not only do we have more suicides with guns than other methods, but that guns are far and away the most effective way to commit suicide. Uh, people sometimes jump off high places or take drugs and uh, they survive. Uh, guns uh, don't usually fail. Some of them they, they can. There are people who shoot themselves and don't die, but it's, it's the exception. Um, there's also studies of people who um, um, have tried to kill themselves and fail, who more people than not say that they're glad they failed. Um, and their descriptions of what it feels like to jump off a high bridge to kill yourself is that the instant one is airborne, there's deep regret. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and you know, as, as is often said, su suicide is a uh, permanent solution to a temporary problem. Even if it's a lifelong problem, it's a temporary moment of feeling especially bad about it. Um, but to be honest, uh, this an anti-suicide bill, the provisions of the bill are provisions that gun safety advocates have been pushing for for years. And when gun rights people complain and they say, well, come on, we know what you're up to. Um, I think the suicide connection is entirely legitimate. But yes, this is generally supported by people who feel that we gun safety is an issue. Um, and on that, uh, but that, that bill has passed. We don't know if the governor is going to veto it. There are a lot of um, uh, bills where he has given, a, well, for example, the, the, the uh, affordable heat. He's given a clear warning to his credit that he didn't like it and that he would likely veto it, and now he has. Um, with, with this, um, we're expecting a veto is uh, the way that we're looking at it. Um, we're going to deal with uh, the veto of, of the, uh, the Clean, the Affordable Heat Act uh, this week, uh, probably tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but uh, in any case, the, um, get, getting back to, to the guns, I just want to say a, a few things ab about what the bill does. Um, and and it, uh, it, it speaks to waiting periods and red flag. Red flag means that, that, that there are times and it's pretty clear, well, it's clear to some people, it's up to a judge whether it's really clear, and uh, that, that someone is, is in, da in, in danger of hurting himself. Not always, but it's usually men who shoot themselves. And uh, although not always, and we should be clear on that. Um, the um, The waiting period, uh, critics say, well, does that really um, help? We've had some mass shootings where the gun had been bought legally. The gun had, had went. There are times when you really look at something and you say, this is, does not solve the problem. The problem is bigger than this, but you do what you can. I would say that it also in defense of environmental protections, uh, responses to global warming, where people say, well, little Vermont's not going to take care of global warming. And I say, well, little Vermont can do its little part. We can hold up our end for what it's worth. Um, I think we have, we certainly, we know we have the votes to override the veto on uh, affordable heat. Um, I think we probably have them on, on guns as well. Uh, I do want to say something about the arguments I get on the email. I got to tell you, email is a curse to politicians. It's just, <laughs> for one thing, if any of you have emails I haven't answered, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm doing the best I can. It's, it, it, it really is a, a ton of them. And they keep coming. The, the, the arguments against the gun safety effort um, often invoke the Second Amendment. And I'll even get things like a lecture 
you, know, you took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution, and we expect you to, to own it. And I forgive a brief social studies lesson. And probably you folks know this, but I, I want to articulate it, and you're the only audience I have today. Uh, the fifth article of the Constitution, Article 5, very clear that an amendment to the Constitution is not an appendix. It's not a footnote. It's not an addition or a satellite. It is part of the Constitution as much as the original Constitution. It is the Constitution. And Article 6 says pretty unequivocally this Constitution and the laws made by Congress pursuant thereto shall be the supreme law. And yes, as an office holder, I take an oath to uphold the Constitution. So the question of whether or not to honor the Second Amendment is not on the table. We do not have, I don't want to violate the Constitution, but if I did, I, would, I don't have that power, I don't have that right. Okay, so the, the Second Amendment, the Constitution, uh, it, 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 it stands. So the whole question of the Second Amendment has never been legitimately part of the discussion. Although it's actually 90% of, of what, what is talked about. Um, there are honest disagreements as to how constitutional provisions ought to be applied. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed is not negotiable. That, that's a given. We start with that understanding. The question is keep and bear arm, arms. The original intent for the conservatives in the room the original intent was the right of the people to keep and bear muskets shall not be infringed. If you want to go to original intent, that's what it, what it was. What, did the, what does it mean, how does it apply to 21st century military weaponry designed in the first place for a single characteristic, which is the capability to kill large numbers of people quickly, which in combat is a good thing to have. I don't know if it's a good thing to have people carrying around on the streets, especially when you get these sort of braggarts strutting down the street with their military weaponry because it's their constitutional right. Maybe the Second Amendment prohibits limits on military weaponry, Maybe, it, but that's a legitimate argument. That's the argument we need to have. Uh, there is no argument about whether or not to honor the Second Amendment. And it, frankly, you know, the, the, the idea that, that we're all breaching our oath of office is, um, is unfair. I, I plead not guilty, and I plead not guilty in favor of my, my colleagues. Okay, that's, um, those are the, the two. There's, there's other, um, we should talk about all the, the big bills, but I think right now the, the, um, the, the gun thing and, uh, and, and, and then on clean heat, I want to say this. Last time out, I just said clean heat, which was the name of the bill two years ago, um, on affordable heat. Two years ago, the clean heat bill, which this is very reminiscent of, this is sort of the, the clean heat bill rewritten to please the governor. He said he wanted a check back. I opposed that check back, as many of my colleagues did. My view is we're already 40 years behind on <laughs> responding to global warming. Let's stop kicking the can down the road and bite the bullet and do what needs to be done. Uh, and the governor vetoed the bill. We now have a bill with a, with a, with a check back. <clears throat> nothing, no thing, nothing happens to the citizenry until there's another legislative vote. I, I wish that were not the case, but it is. I sent a memo to the chair of natural, the Natural Resources Committee, and I, I said, I hate the check back but it really is a blessing in disguise politically because I'm able to say that to people who are worried that it's going to, in particular, you've been told it's going to increase uh, your heating costs. And I just got, I was at a family gathering and graduation and got balled out by my ex-wife that I'm raising her, <laughs> and we usually get along pretty well, that, that I'm raising her, her uh, heating costs. Fossil fuels are expensive. And the, uh, the cleaner fuels are not only cleaner, they're cheaper. Very expensive to get into in the first place. 
And this bill is aimed at setting up a system which the legislature has not. It directs the Public Service uh, uh, Board to set up a system whereby if you want to sell dirty fuel, um, you know, you, you got to pay for the privilege by buying credits from people who are sellers of dirty fuel who are backing off from it, who are developing ways to, to shift and, and, and get uh, off of carbon. And, and, and uh, you know, it was George Bush Jr., W., who had said, you know, we're addicted to petroleum and we got to get off it. Um, we've got to kick the habit. Uh, but that plan will come back to the legislature. And um, I'm in the funny position of having, well, it's not funny. It's not really how the legislature often works. We are a collegial body. We, have, we regard one another as colleagues. Uh, I serve on the Natural Resources and Energy Committee. There are many provisions in this bill that I opposed, because, in, including the check back. Um, however, I opposed them in committee. Once the bill was put together, then the question is, okay, this is the deal. You vote yes or you vote no. Or as is often said, the train is leaving the station. Are you on the train or are you on the station? And ultimately, I supported the bill. So I'm supporting a bill that has some stuff in it I, I didn't like. But that stuff is an answer, an effective answer to the concerns that people have, have expressed. Uh, I also just want to mention one of our, my Republican colleagues, the state senator, um, has just lost his mother and is doing, will be participating in that session by Zoom. And um, you can vote by Zoom if it's a family loss. In the Senate. In the Senate, yeah. Not in the House. Not in the House. Yeah. They may, we do make our own, our respective rules. Um, he has asked, the Republican caucus has asked, could we have no speeches? And uh, here's Vermont, is our answer was absolutely yes. We will allow this to be a quick in and out session so that this poor guy can go to his mother's funeral. I think there are states where that, that courtesy would not be extended. And it's also a courtesy to the Republicans. And this is a this is a vote. We we the Democrats we have the votes. We know they're they're going to lose. And my comment when I was asked, we were polled, is this okay? And and my answer was, come on, it's the least we can do. We're beating these guys up. We can at least treat them decently. And that that was not me alone. I mean, that's the, the policy. And we had decided that we're going, and I just broke the, the agreement, <laughs> that we would let you folks do most of the talking. <laughs> but so. I, it, I mean, I'm certainly happy to, to, to uh, go on, but I, I do think people have questions. Do you want, yeah. to, do you want to ask those first? Or More do comments. Want, do you want me to? I, I, want, I don't want to take up the whole right? time, but I could. So I won't, but I won't. Well, we'll, we'll shut it down when you I'm going to make some order. comments, OK? <laughs> your your uh, H230. Is that the one where it says that I got to take and lock my gun in a safe and a ammunition over here, so that I get broke into and I want to protect my home? I got to spend X amount of time with the light on so that whoever's breaking in can find me and shoot me, or beat me with a bat or stab me with a knife. I can't have a gun near my bed. That's the way I read the bill. It doesn't say you can't have a gun. Uh, it says, but it says you got to have it locked away. Yeah. And you got to have the ammunition away from the gun. Uh, that's what it does say. If, if I recall, and I, you know, and this, I gotta the and I'm, and I'm absolutely operating on an early version of it, so I don't know how it came out of the, you know, how, how it came out of the, ultimately, on the floor. I've forgotten. There's been so many bills. Uh, but I remember early on there was the discussion, uh, because people asked that question, and at least one iteration of the bill was, you know, that the gun has to be, if it's going to be loaded, it has to be within your possession. And possession was defined as basically arms reach, so that no, it had to be under your control. So, 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 so what it was, at least, was that you could keep it in your nightstand, because and theoretically your grandkid isn't going to run in and 
and get it in the middle of the night so you have control of it. I don't know if that, did that change? Do you know? I have well, read it. I, I didn't see that. So I saw the one about locking everything away yeah. in a park and it's like, wait a minute, I'm kind of half asleep. Yeah. I got to go remember the combination of the safe. And yeah. We're going to put the bullets and I got to load, you know. And that was, that, was, that was the concern and that's why that came up. And I, I think they put that in, but I, I, I'd have to okay, read that the, would be good. the latest version. But the idea was that, it, it, the idea is that either you have to have Direct control over it, which, it, or, or it has to be safe somewhere. You can't, you couldn't just leave okay. it on the kitchen counter, and, and go to bed. Yeah. Uh, or leave it in the nightstand while you go to work. Yeah. Or leave it in the nightstand while you go to work. Right. Uh, you know, now if you take it with you, you still have it in your possession right. when you're traveling or whatever. Then that's still okay, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that was that was my understanding. I don't like I said. I, I haven't read. I don't. I don't I haven't read anything. Clear. I don't remember all the little details uh, of the day. They do, you're right. They do change along the way. Yeah. Um, let's see. Global warming. Um, nobody talks about how all the wonderful things that Vermont's already done. I mean, 120 years ago, we were 15% forest, 85% open land. We now are 85% forest. The carbon eating forest. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit, about the forests that we have that are doing good things. I mean, don't, yeah, this, is, no, this is just a comment that you can mull no. around and whatever. I want to get all my comments okay, in. Okay, but, but just quick, quickly say, I, I, we do talk about that a lot. Okay. We're, we're proud of Vermont as, as a leader. We're not the leader we once were. There are other states that are more aggressive on protecting the environment. We were talking about the uh, S5 and uh, was S5 the one with the, the, that's the credits? For, that's you have to buy yeah. the credits. Well, what happened? Why didn't we stop years and years and years ago? We started doing um, sol uh, solar power, and we're allowing all these developers to sell credits out of state. So now we don't have this credit bank because somebody puts in a solar field, makes money and then leave. And the state is sitting here where we've had almost an abundant amount of credit if it had all stayed in Vermont. So we want to pass the law or a bill that says we're going to charge you money. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to pay money for these credits, which are a little different credits, but I'm, I'm bothered with the, the word about the credits that we've already given away. When we might have, we might should have said, okay, you want to put a solar field, and there's going to be X credit that needs to stay in Vermont. You're going to use Vermont yeah. landscape. You're, you're talking about uh, uh, destroying our vistas. Well, I tell you, you drive up Route Seven, and you think hey, vistas great. If you like blue, <laughs> Route Seven is great. So that's I want, and I got one more. Kicking, kicking the can down the road. I read today or yesterday on the Digger. About an article about you're not going to do anything about childcare. Now you want to keep people working or get them working, and but you're going to you're going to uh, hit people with uh, money for so they can have fuel. You want to uh, do things with a gun, but childcare and housing they should be one and two. This these other things, in, in my opinion, could need to, need to be do, dealt with. But after you get one and two done, that's the way I do it at home. I have things I need to do first. We get them done. And then we move on to other things that are important, but maybe not so much when we're talking about we want workers to come to the state. Well, there's no place to live. And then if we find no place to live, they've got, and they're young, they've got kids, there's nobody to take care of the kids. I will have to give a, a, a shout out to the fact that they approved the lunch program, breakfast and lunch program, yay. I think that we tried to do that when I was in the school system, but yeah. we couldn't do that going. But anyway, there's my comments. Okay. You can deal with them as you want. Quick, quick response. I, I think we, we are not kicking child care down. You're not doing anything about it this year, says this is, this is, uh, It says you're, not, you're leaving it in the dust. Well, I mean, paid family leave it appears to be left in the dust yep. for the year. We do have a two-year session, the way this is the first year of the biennium. Um, and the problem with that was, was funding. And I've got to say, the, we, 
you know, the, the people speak with many voices. And one of the voices you hear from the people pretty clearly is, we think our taxes are too high. And uh, stop taxing us, or stop taxing us as much as you do. And that means spend less and stop increasing spending. And that is, is what was at, at, at work on, on that. And, and it's not a matter of saying, well, we can't afford it. It's that the House and the Senate have had different approaches to funding and uh, have not been able to come to an agreement. Because whatever agreement they're going to come to is going to be frustrating and probably inadequate. Um, as, as far as um, uh, child care, I think that's sort of in its terminal in the final negotiations this week. And we'll see what happens with, with that. That's that's not dead yet. No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, what else? You you had made made another and global warming oh. uh, and the credits. The credits that we yeah. we have given away. Dave, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. So we have a system nationally called cap and trade. Where if you're a power company or you're, you know, someone making power or using power, you, you get credits and you can sell those credits to someone else who a company that feels, well, our company, the, the economics of our, our company say that we should not do a greener technology, so we'll pay for that privilege. And what it does then is it, it, it does put, it's, it's like a pollution tax. You get, you get to pollute if you pay the fee to pollute. It's a fee to pollute, which is nasty, but it makes perhaps as a disincentive to, to, to pollution. And it creates a financial incentive to people who, um, want, who, who do green stuff. The fact that the credits can be sold means that um, some of the rich tops in Vermont have ugly windmills on them. The beautiful fields in Vermont have solar collectors, <coughs> and we're not getting the the, the, ben the credits for that that green. Um, you got to understand that the the idea of doing away with cap and trade and just saying okay, stop polluting. That's uh, that's the more radical environmental that's what you position. Want to do with a clean heat, heat uh, okay. That's what you're <laughs> looks to me like. What you're planning on? Well, I fought the good fight, and now. <laughs> Had to decide: Am I on the train or am I on the platform? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I do know that um, that I mean you're you're right. I mean, right? Ch uh, child care and housing are are huge priorities, and they they are the in the house. They are two of the big priorities that came in. The other one, one of the other ones, was workforce development, and <clears throat> and uh, and we've been we've been. In the house, uh, the workforce development pieces have all basically been through, and that, those come through my my committee. So, um, and then the the housing and the child care. I mean, you know, it it, it is a little bit of a. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a you know trying to. Uh, what happens is is a committee says we should do this, and then appropriation says yeah, but we can only afford this, and uh, and so then so then there's a negotiation around that. People trying to. I, my understanding, I mean, I know there's still priorities. I don't know if they will get all of the bugs worked out and, 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 and come to an agreement with the Senate and all that stuff in the next week. And so when they say it's, you know, it might be, <clears throat> they're not, might get, get it done by this year, it will certainly be next year. The, um, and, and I do uh, agree with you, like my, my committee, uh, in particular, but then a number of the other committees, including uh, Ways and Means and Appropriations in the House, uh, uh, really do not care for the worker relocation program. Because you pay somebody to move to Vermont, but there's no place for them to live, right? And so, so why are we spending money on doing that? Um, uh, you know, and so we've always been against it. Uh, the, the, uh, there are folks on the Senate side who, who love that program, uh, and the governor and his administration love that program. And so they, they, they're always kind of pushing to, to put that in. We took it out, the Senate has put it back in. It's going to be one of those things that, that I think will end up being negotiated between the, 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 the committees of conference when the time comes. Is that? 
Hmm? How much money is that? What is it? Uh, I don't have my notes. I think a lot. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> quite a bit. It's quite a bit. Uh, well, well, actually, it's less than it was. It, let me. So I think it, I mean it's not a gazillion dollars. So what it is is um, uh, I believe the House said zero dollars. The Senate originally, uh, I think. No, actually, I think the House said zero. I think the governor said two million, and the Senate said, "Well, let's split down the middle, and we'll go for one million." Uh, but I, but but we feel like a million dollars to pay somebody to come here with no place to live. Yeah. Uh, well, also, I mean, there's the argument those people would be coming here anyway if they could find a place to live. That's right. That's right. And yeah, you know, another another one that that uh, in my committee again, but it's a case where I feel like we're throwing money away, but the administration loves it, is, is uh, the uh, Vermont Economic Growth Initiative. It's called, we, they call it Veggie. Uh, and, uh, and it's a, uh, a public-private thing that's set up, um, a cooperation, where there's a board that, over, that, that oversees the giving out of money to corporations that either from out of state want say they want to move in to Vermont and set up a, a business of a certain size, but but they can't unless they have some money, or there are businesses in Vermont who are small but say we're we're ready, we could grow exponentially and hire lots of people, but we need some money, uh, and so we uh, and so the grants are often in the range of five million dollars. Uh, it's not. Not, you know, and there are a number of success stories. Uh, Lawson's uh, liquids, um, you know, that uh, over in what they in Waitsfield, Warren, um, you know, they they went from a from basically three people to what they have now, uh, in part because they got a veggie grant, could build a whole new building, would included the restaurant and the distribution network, all that stuff, and now they I don't remember how many they they hired, but but the, so there are some success stories to it, but but again. Uh, but there are also some other stories where uh, uh, companies said, uh, there was one in particular who said, well, we want to move to Vermont, and, and, uh, but we can't do it unless you, know, you give us money, so we gave them money. And then they went on TV for an interview and said, no, we were, we were planning on coming to Vermont anyway. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and no one ever bothered to ask them for the money back. Uh, this was before my time. Uh, but, um, and so, and, and so that's all a little bit. Uh, right now, Rhino Foods is asking for uh, a bunch of money. I don't know if you know who Rhino Foods are. They're the people who make the cookies in your Ben & Jerry's cookie dough uh, ice cream. Uh, and so, so, you know, they're... Uh, uh, and part of the problem that my committee has with, these, with this process is, is because it's a quasi-governmental body, there's some question the way the way the their organizational documents are set out, that that Dave wants to, you know, you know, expand his electric business to, you know, so he can employ 500 people, uh, and he comes to to this board. He fills out all the paperwork. He comes to the board, and they all go into a little room together and they chat in private. They all go into executive session, and then they come out and they say, "Here, Dave, here's your money." There's no, there's no accountability. There's no record. There's nothing. It's a black box, and um, and so the auditor said, there has to be somebody that's from the auditor's office, somebody who's who's there. They're probably not doing anything wrong, but we don't know. And so, uh, so uh, they are they are scheduled to sunset that process at the end of this year. Governor's office is pushing so hard to not have that happen, um, <clears throat> and so what my uh, committee initially did was was we said, okay, well, uh, we'll let you go for one more year, but we're we're putting together a we actually there needs to be a whole set of accounting. There needs to be uh, you have to allow the auditor's office in to look at what you're doing. We, we need to we need to actually know what's going on. And then we'll make a decision in a year. Um, and uh, but a, a, a interesting twist was uh, so, uh, and we t 
we when we spoke and we said you know you really need to you know I mean open you need to follow open you know open meeting laws and you know and you need to tell people when you're going into all that stuff and they said oh yeah 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 we yeah of course of course we will and we I knew they didn't really have a history at it and then uh, last Tuesday I think it was uh, the, they had a meeting and they went to executive session and no one knew they were going to accept it. There was no open, they, they followed none of the rules and when their executive director was asked about it, they said we don't have to because we're quasi-governmental. So my committee immediately put in an uh, amendment to their bill saying, uh, you know, specifically saying, oh yes you do. You have to follow the main rules. And uh, uh, because it's those weird little things like that. So, but that's another case where, where at least in my committee, Commerce Economic Development, I mean, on the one hand, we're trying to give out money to help businesses and things grow, but they have to have accountability. You can't just give it to somebody because they, they asked for it. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but yeah, so again, that, to go to your point, Dave, is, is, that, is that there are, there are cases where, where you know, and my committee is saying, again, that, that veggie program is designed to encourage companies to move to Vermont. And there are certain limitations that they have to be able to hire X number of people and all this stuff. They have promised to do all that stuff. But it's no place for them to live. So why are we giving them money yeah. for this mm -hmm. yeah. when, when, have, when that money should be going into other programs like housing and, and all these other things? Yeah, I have three comments none of which require a response. One, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, I agree <laughs> that there's a priority in child care, housing, climate, and guns. I think that that's all critically important. Second, last weekend, when somebody walked into that mall in Texas, something went off in my head. I'm done. I'm done being patient. The Second Amendment, the ruling that, that it applied to individuals, also said that it, the, the gun law, there, that guns could be regulated. It was very, very clear in that ruling that guns could be regulated. Personally, I see absolutely no reason why an AR-15 should be owned by any private individual. Except there is a reason. There are those in this country who see themselves as going to war with our military and they want to be armed with military weapons but this guy my patience is gone I think it is time for us to say no we don't want military weaponry in the hands of civilians period stop end of story Third, climate. Uh, H-282, I think, is uh, about uh, geothermal. Uh, did not make it into this year's um, deliberations. Right. I hope it is on the wall for going forward. I think it is a critical piece of legislation that provides a viable alternative to fossil fuels uh, and would hope to see that that gets a lot of support and, and the critical thinking that it needs. Uh, but I w I w anything you can do, either both of you, to make sure that that goes forward, please do that. This is not a comment, but just a little information. Okay, that bill is on the wall in Senate Natural Resources and Energy, 
and we are in the process, well now we're in the process of getting out of Montpelier, but at the end of the session it's also deciding what we want to look at over the summer so as to be ready to work on next year. And that bill is, is a serious candidate. And you have two Windsor County Senators on that committee. Uh, Becca White is also on the committee. And uh, <coughs> it looks, it's an inviting technology. For those of geothermal, the idea is that you, you dig down deep enough, you get heat. <laughs> and uh, the economics may not work for individual households, although we don't know that. We right. haven't checked into it. But certainly a municipality, a village, and that's, what, and that's what this bill does, yeah. is it makes it possible for the, the village or a cluster of houses to become a, quote, utility so that the financing comes via utility kind of mechanisms rather than yeah. the traditional uh, go find... Um, you know, millions of dollars to do something that you may get a payback on. Okay, we have to do a time check for Dick. So does yeah, anyone have anything they, up, yeah. any parting comments they want Sounds for like Dick as he gets up to one billion? I have two minutes. <laughs> any just, guidance? I would just like to echo this number two. Um, I don't have a problem with guns, but obviously people don't know how to to properly you have to have a license to drive a car. Yeah. There's there's, there's limits. I mean, you really shouldn't have a tank in your place to protect yourself. I think something needs to be done. It's, this is totally out of And thoughts and prayers doesn't get it in my book. Thanks. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know Vermont, because uh, um, we're small, sometimes needs to take a lead on some of this stuff. And I know, you, I know you're way ahead of the rest of the country. I, 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 well, I'm, not so much anymore. Well, we you were. were. Yeah, and, we were. Um, and I know, you know, we get kind of poo-pooed around here, but somebody needs to go out there and say something. And I, I'm fine if you want to have a loaded gun in your dresser. You don't need a AR, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't, don't need that, and if you really need one, you need to have to go through some sort of rig, you know. The, my my uh, problem with this whole conversation has been I've had conversations personally with other folks that are anti-gun. And, well, get rid of the AR-15, that's just a start. Oh, stop then, it. Yeah, stop it. I, listen to me. Yeah. Listen, well, listen to what I said. I didn't say that's what I believe. I said that's, that's what, what he hears. Yeah. That's, that's that what the, the NRA wants you to believe, just like they yeah. want you to believe you need I, a gun to protect yourself. You're not listening okay. to me. <laughs> yeah. so. uh, I do have to run. I'm gonna... Thank you. Uh, listen, I don't know if this is the last one of these for the year. It you is, figure yeah. it is? Okay. Yeah. Well, this session. Yeah, this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. Anybody wants to know thank where you, you live? Go us. talk to him. I have his address. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for hearing me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fine. Fine. <laughs> we'll see you up yonder. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, do, do you have questions? questions? Do you want me to talk about what we've been working on? You've been taking some notes. You got no, some things you want to add? Okay. Yeah. Um, probably the big, big thing. It's been that my committee's been working on is uh, uh, we received from the Ag, Ag Committee uh, the uh, uh, Farm Equipment Right to Repair bill. Um, and uh, because what we got testimony from a number of farmers, especially, you know, large farmers, but also smaller farmers, that, you know, back in the day, you got your tractor, and if it broke, you could, you know, weld something together or whatever, you could put it together and you could make it work. and. And uh, what a number of farmers have been finding now is, that, of course, you know they're spending you know three hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars on a big, big piece of equipment, and and sometimes sometimes they can even get some of the, they can get the parts and put them in themselves, but there's a reset button that has to be pushed uh, by the company, and uh, and that's going to cost you. And, uh, and so they have to basically come out, plug their, their computer in, and push a, yep, it's okay. And, and, they, and they may have only one service person in the state. And so uh, I don't care that your crops need to be harvested now. I can see you in 10 days. 
Uh, and so that's a problem if you're a farmer. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then there are other cases where you, they just can't get the parts they need. And uh, because uh, what we've seen is, is the large uh, equipment companies have been consolidated, right? John Deere, now everything you have to get through United Ag and Turf. Uh, you know, and, and you know, they have, and, and so there are pieces and, and equipment and diagnostic tools and all the stuff that you can't get. And you can't even take it to your, your local you know, uh, farm equipment fixer, buddy, uh, a small business, because they can't get that equipment either. Uh, and a large part of it is, is the, uh, the computer programmed parts. Uh, you know, the things that have, because everything has smart chips in it now, right, you know, and so, so, uh, so we spent a lot of time taking testimony from the farmers who were, who are just, you know, it's untenable for them, they just can't make it work, and we also spent time listening to the other side, um, which uh, was, I mean, uh, the industry is under some pressure because there are other states that are already trying to regulate them. And, uh, and so John Deere had put out a memorandum of understanding with, with uh, the, the farmers in their state, you know, basically saying, we can do this you know, a little bit, but we can, but we can repeal this uh, in, with a 30 day notice. Um, you know, and, and so what we have is, is uh, there's California, uh, it's interesting, all the C states, California, uh, Connecticut, and Colorado uh, have, have been working on, on major right to repair bills for farm equipment and, and Vermont is, is, is joining them. And uh, so what we're, uh, so we listened to the industry. They, of course, didn't want anybody to regulate anything. Uh, we, the, uh, but then we had to talk to the, uh, the dealers because that's where you get your parts from. And they were really afraid that, that if you were, you know, that they would get shut out, that because the, there was some discussion in the bill that, that you could just order your parts direct from John Deere. And you could order your own diagnostic stuff from John Deere, you could do all that stuff. So then the, the, the dealers, especially the part dealers, they're out of the loop and, they're, and they, they have franchise agreements. So my committee actually, we had a whole class on franchise law. That was exciting, uh, and uh, um, and and so we um, so what we came up with was basically sort of what it is with your car, which is that there are, you know, that that you you can go to the authorized go to your authorized Ford dealer to get the parts to put on your car, and and they uh, they will sell you the parts. They get to make a little profit on it, like they always do. Um, you know, they have to sell them to you for, for cost, uh, and uh, and then you can put them in and and um, and basically make it work. Part part of their question was around. They were worried that they were worried about a couple of things. One is uh, this notion that people were going to get their proprietary computer programs, but they also actually. We eventually found out they actually sort of already sell that to some people anyway, so it's not you know they could put controls on that stuff. The other argument was that um, uh, fear that that emissions. This was the, the the big argument they eventually resorted to, which was that uh, that the emissions, if you tweaked, if you gave people the ability to tweak with the emissions, then they would. Uh, and that so that you know they might get more power out of their equipment because it's no longer being as as clean, uh, and so um, so we um, uh, there was a bit of discussion around that, and uh, what we ended up doing was putting in our bill a reiteration of because it's already a federal law that you that you should you can't fiddle with the emissions of your vehicles, uh, of your car, right? Uh, uh, some, of, some of their people were, uh, actually, it was interesting, I think it was the diesel industry uh, lobbyist was like, he's like, you know, uh, he, he said, people should be arresting the folks that do the rolling coal stuff because 
in order to, you, you know what that is, where they, you, they alter their vehicles to make it so it throws out as much black smoke as possible. Uh, that's actually against the law. And, uh, um, you know, because uh, it's, it's a federal crime to, to mess with your emission system. Uh, so, uh, none of this was about accountability. It wasn't like you screw with your machine and then it, it doesn't work properly and someone gets hurt or something. It's not about who's responsible for that. There, there wasn't, I mean, uh, I mean, they didn't get into that too deeply, actually. There was a, there was a little bit around that, but, but, but you know, the idea is that's that not in the headlines now. The, the other stuff's in the headlines. Yeah. So, um, so ultimately, what we end up doing was putting in uh, the bill, basically saying, just a reminder, you can't mess with your emissions. Uh, you can you can use these this equipment. You can have access to the diagnostic tools. You can have access to the to the repair tools, and 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 you have permission <coughs> if you need to to deactivate or remove an emission piece while you are fixing the thing, but you have to put it back on. Um, and, uh, uh, and that, and that you, people can buy the stuff through the dealers. We gave, uh, they did ultimately, and this is where I think sometimes legislation works exceedingly well, and I think this is a large uh, part due to the skill of the chair of my committee. He basically kept getting the two the two sides in there. He'd get the farmers in, and he would say, "Oh yeah, you're making a lot of good points there. Oh yeah, right." And the industry is saying, "Oh no, he's leaning their way." Then the industry come in, he'd be like, "Oh no, you're making some really good points over here." <laughs> right? And the farmers would get kind of nervous, right? you know. And then the dealers, "Oh yeah, you're making good points here." And eventually, they all got scared. They all got in a room together and came up with an agreement that they could all live with, and 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 so that's the bill that we have. Um, and, uh, um, and so, uh, it, it, I feel like that, that's actually the way the legislation should work. So Kirk, you, you, I think maybe Dick mentioned two bills that the governor had vetoed that are going to be suggested overridden yep. this week. Is there other stuff that he's vetoed that you folks are going to focus on? I mean, uh, he hasn't vetoed anything else. Just those two so yeah. far. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so as, as far as I know, that's that's. So he's going to be in a bad mood if he vetoed two bills and he's going to override both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think the House has enough votes to override, uh, but but I think we're we're less certain than than the Senate is, uh, and so um, but I suspect. We were called in today, this afternoon, the House. Uh, we don't usually work on Mondays, but we're called in. Uh, and I, I have a feeling that that I, I, I don't, we, we can't, I don't think we can vote on the override today because everything has to sit for, you have to have a notice the day before. You have to have one day. So I suspect part of the goal is that we're coming in today so that it'll be on the agenda for tomorrow. But I don't know what the agenda for today is. Um, I got an email saying we had to come, and then uh, I suspect sometime in the next couple hours we'll get an email saying what we're doing today, but I don't know. So if the Affordable Heating Act gets vetoed and gets overridden, I thought Dick had mentioned something the last time that there was going to be like a two-year study yeah. on that. Yeah. So it won't be implemented like <coughs> on July 1st. Yeah. No. So, uh, and I actually, I brought, I stick it. Because uh, people often have questions about about the bill and like you know, and and so I actually even brought the like so the the in the bill it says the clean heat standard shall be designed and implemented to enhance social equity by prioritizing customers with low income, moderate income, those households with the highest energy burdens, residents of manufactured homes, those be trailers, and renter households with tenant paid energy bills. The design sh shall ensure all customers have an equitable opportunity to participate in and benefit from clean heat measures regardless of heating fuel used, income level, geographic location, residential building type, or home ownership status. So that's the, that's the aspiration, okay? So that's the, that's the goal. Whether it's all attainable is, is another question. And so the, as S5 currently Rest is basically it. It tells the 
uh, Public Utilities Commission, come up with a plan on how to make that true. And, and, and so you have to, you know, so, so they're going to kind of come up with models and, and, you know, and, and say, you know uh, gather the data and say, okay, we could do it this way. Now we're going to run diagnostics and, you know, and stuff and see, is that going to actually save money? Is it going to lose money? How's that? Oops, we need to change it, work on it. They have, uh, they have uh, two years to come up with that plan. When you hear the governor say, well, they're, they're, going, to be, they're going to be already working on this thing you know, instantly. It's not really going to wait for two years. What they're working on is, is the prototypes to see whether or not they can make it work. That's what they're working on, right? or would be. And so then at two years, there's the, there's the tech back where they come back in. They come to the Senate, uh, to, the Senate to, the, to the legislature, and they say, this is what we came up with. This is the data we found. Do we move forward? At which point, it has to pass through both the House and the Senate and, and be sent to, to the governor. It goes through that process again. And then, and then, uh, and then there's, uh, if I remember right there, even uh, then there's a three-year period where they can stop it at any time if it seems like, oh, we have an unintended consequence. Uh, you know, the, so, so all those kind of safety pieces are built in. Um, so all the stuff about you know if it passes in July 1st, your you know your fuel oil is going up 50 or 70 cents a gallon or whatever is, is not true. It's not. It's, uh, now the the amount of misinformation that has been disseminated uh, by people with a lot of money in order to disseminate that stuff is has been astounding. Um, and uh, and uh, and so like Dick apologized for not always getting back to everybody's emails, but you know like uh, you know, but, when you get you know 150 emails on on that bill in one day, you know it, you, you don't always get back to them all. I look at them all, by the way. If if I see a name I recognize, if I see Dave A's name, I'll pick that out. But half the, <laughs> but half the time, I, actually I'd say 80 percent of the time, they're not from people in my district. And uh, and at one one time I got a bunch of uh, emails, and they were like. Um, you know, David Smith from uh, 327 Sycamore Road, Bethel, Vermont. I'm like, I don't think we have a Sycamore Road. And actually, I went and got the town maps and stuff, and I looked, and I'm like, that's a fake address. So we get a bunch of that stuff, too. So we're, we have to sort through all that stuff. So sometimes, if I... If Dave uses a pseudonym, he uses, you know, I don't know, some other email address, I don't recognize it, I might not get back to you right away because I don't know who you are. Uh, but Thank you for qualifying that because, yeah, yeah that's what people are asking. Oh, fiscal year, July 1st, but I knew that, that Dick had mentioned, no, there's going to be a two-year study and then the three-year deal, so yeah. that makes it easier for yeah. people to swallow that if the veto gets overridden, it's not going to start. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 what, will, what will start, if it gets overridden, would be then the Public Utilities Commission would, would start to work on their models. Does, does this veto, if it holds, it tells the PUC to don't go look at it? Is that what the, the veto means? If the veto is, Saves, is sustained. That, yeah. That's, uh, what they're, that's what he's telling then, you. Okay. Then, then nothing happens. Okay. Absolutely nothing happens. Uh, and, you know, it's... I, you know, I'm still, I'm not a baby legislator anymore, but I'm still pretty young, and uh, um, and and it's always a a uh, a strategy if you don't like something is to say, well, well, we need to talk about this more. Let's get back to it later. Um, you know, I I think last month I I said, you know, when you talk to your when you were little and you went to your parents and you said, you know, hey, can I borrow the car? And, and dad would be like, you know, you got three answers, yes, no, or, or we'll talk about it later. And we'll talk about it later always means no, right? And so, so it's a big legislative technique as we'll talk about it later. Well, talking about talking about it later, you said that one of the topics that has been discussed this year but not moved on is child care. Yeah. What else falls in that category? Well, I mean, and, 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 don't take it as it hasn't been moved on. 
it, it, there's absolutely a bill that has been worked on. It's that, you know, uh, again, I think one of the things I learned when I, I went to a legislative con uh, conference uh, uh, over over a town meeting break, and uh, and we were all talking about what it's like to be a legislator, and and I was telling them what it was like to be a legislator in Vermont, where where we we get you know we have a bill, and then we invite all the people that love it, and all the people that hate it, and all the other all the experts, the financial experts, and the actuaries, and everybody, and we gather all this information, and we we you know it's a very deliberative process. It takes forever because we try to try to look at all those little pieces and and kind of figure out how we're going to make it work. And, and, and sometimes you think you've got it all worked out, and then someone comes in and says, oh, by the way, you know, uh, did you think about this? And we go, oh, we didn't think about that. So then we have to, you know, how do we make that work? So, so bills take a long time. Uh, as I learned was a lot of other states were telling me, wow, that doesn't, you know, our committee meets for like two hours. The chair walks in and says, this is, this, these are the bills we're passing today, and, and that's just it. And so in Vermont, it's, it's a really intense, you know, uh, process. And so, so especially when you have a bill that's as complicated as, as answering this question about child care or, or, or uh, you know, any of those kind of larger issues, sometimes it just takes a long time to, to work on it. And so it's not like it's not being worked on. It's, it's absolutely being worked on. It's that they have hit enough big questions and and uh, pieces where they say, oh, we're, we're going to need a lot more research. We're going to, oh, we need to talk to this whole another set of people, and we don't have enough time. So, so, we, it, so the, it'll be back. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciate your discussion about how the, the agriculture repair bill yeah. worked. Um, S5 did not work that way. The, the, clean, the heat bill. It was written by the industry. We know that. Uh, it was uh, forwarded in the climate plan, even though the um, the climate council really had not looked at it. Hmm. The debate, at least in natural resources, was twice as much time given to the industry and the uh, retailers than to those who had climate concerns. Uh, the, I'm not saying I'm against it. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm for it. I am opposed to uh, using biofuels. Uh, and the lack of any mention of biomass is for me a critical oversight. Two years to study uh, by the Public Utilities Commission, who is uh, not not shown much of an interest in genuine climate stuff, just says to me, it wouldn't hurt if it was vetoed. Mm. Yeah. And I wouldn't feel all that bad yeah. about it being vetoed. Uh, and I could live with it. Not being, not being vetoed because that means that the folk who are, have a different opinion have an have two years to do the education around these issues uh, that uh, yeah. that we were not given for, uh, and, an and, honest hearing. This and year. I do I do hear that um, the I mean a couple things all bills start somewhere. Right. And uh, uh, and sometimes it's a legislator sort of decides to, to figure it out. And, and lots of times it is somebody comes in and says, I've got an opinion and, uh, and here's the, the, the draft of it. Uh, and certainly there are lobbying companies out there that, that, I mean, they walk in with the bill already in language and then the committee has to decide, you know, uh, uh, you know my committee frequently gets, you know, because we're, economic development business and we often get things where somebody comes in and says yes I've, got, I've, I've identified this issue and this issue is this system isn't working for me to make more money and and sometimes we're like oh you're right that's that's horrible we need to fix that and sometimes you're like oh you're looking for an unfair advantage 
Yeah. And so, yeah, no, we're not going to do that bill like you wanted. Um, and so that does happen. And, um, and so a, a couple pieces to that is, is um, every piece of legislation can be amended. Uh, you know, uh, no bill is ever uh, so codified in, 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 our, in our house that, that, you know, if, again, right, if in that two-year process they say, oh, we forgot about, you know, geothermal, uh, th those things can be added back in. So, so it's, it's never, uh, oops, you know, we didn't put it in, so it's never be in there. Uh, and also, again, I think just like with the right to repair bill, uh, I think that if everyone isn't a little bit happy with it and a little bit unhappy with it, Thank then you. you probably have leaned too far one side or the other. Um, you know, that, that uh, absolutely, I have heard, you know, on the one hand, people saying there should be no, right, you know, I should have the right to pollute as darn much as I want, you know, and, uh, and, then, and then on the other side, people saying, you know, so that bill, you know, that bill goes too far, and then on the other side, you say, well, that that bill allows people to heat with, with, with biofuels, and that's not okay. Um, and so, therefore, I don't like that bill either. And so, I feel like in the middle is some is a good place to start. And then you can see if you're not really quite in the middle, you're actually leaning this way or that. Then, then it allows you. Opportunity that's why I'm to saying I, if whether it is the veto is sustained yeah. or not. You don't care because you're you're a little bit ambivalent. And and. We're not. I'm not focused on that particular bill. I am focused on an, a piece in it yeah. that I think needs much more attention. Yeah. Here's where I, I just have a comment. I, yeah. I support the bill because that mission statement that you read yeah. at the beginning becomes law. That's right. That becomes law. Therefore, you always have something now to come back to and saying. This is law, and it's we are not accomplishing this, or we can accomplish this better. Without that law, you have gone nowhere. Yeah, yeah. it gives you the it it it, it again, and that becomes it, law. It becomes July first. I think, I think or that's whatever, it whenever in. it's passed. Yeah. and so then you. Have so from that point mission. on, you now have that mission statement that is officially law. Yeah, that's why that's why I brought it to read it. That's again, I think that's what's important. With all its imperfections, yeah. that's the that's the focus. That that's what I see. And it's you know it's amazing to me that <laughs> this is just a general philosophical comment. But I thought about this: um, how many of us have ever done anything perfectly in our families, planning anything, <laughs> or in our lives that we haven't gone back to and said, "I wish I had done that better." And yet, somehow, we expect when we do something collectively in government that we expect that thing to come out perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> we always have to come back and fix whatever it is we we started with and make it better. Right, so. and and that's why it's a yeah. Uh, any any of these laws you make, they get they often get tweaked right. in, often in subsequent we're, often sessions. Often we're doing this. Yep. What were we thinking? Yeah, but. That's how you move forward. So, yep. Any other questions or anything? I I just like to say this is the last one. I'd like to thank the library yeah. for doing this. I talked to a, a friend who was outside of Windsor County and and your district, and he said, "Well, I wish I had an opportunity to do that in in my home." And I realize the senators have a large, the largest. County in the in the place and having them make time. I guess we're lucky to have Dick here, but uh, um, I think this is important. Yeah. And yeah, thank thank you. thank you and thank your colleagues if you happen to see them in the lunch yeah. line. We'll, we'll be rushing past each other and all. So <laughs> so this so this week. I mean, just so it, to give you an idea. So what happens in the legislature here at the end is there's a whole lot of you know hurry up and wait. Uh, you know, because because the House is working on tweaking Senate bills and Senate's you know tweaking on House bills, and and of course if they if if the House sent them a bill and they tweak it, then they have to send it back and we have to approve their tweak or not, right? And so so at this very end, uh, you know, there, there's a time where you're you're like we're just sitting here waiting for in our committee, uh, we're just sitting here waiting until the Senate 
tells us what they're going to do with that bill, and then and then suddenly you get them, uh, you get the bills here, and uh, and you know you have to you have to vote on this within the next you know ten minutes, and and so everybody rushes and you sit down and you, you, know, and you they go through the bill and how they've changed, and you decide whether or not you're going to support it, not going to support it. So there's a lot of a lot of rushing and then waiting. And, and you don't, and what that means also is you don't know, like, um, uh, like tonight, I think, in theory, the estimate is we'll be done at 4.30, but it could be 9.30, you, you, you never know. Uh, it all depends if somebody had, you know, how long the Senate, uh, you know, uh, tweaks what they're tweaking, and, 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 uh, and, and so, so it, yeah, it gets to be a, uh, it's both exciting and boring at the same time. Uh, and uh, uh, so, thank you for uh, serving. Yeah. So, yeah. One, one thing so. that I noticed, they used to take my granddaughter up to the legislature and just take her for lunch. We'd watch a little and yeah. have lunch there. But how easy it is to talk to your to your representatives and stuff, and it seems to me more seems to get done in the lunch area than it does in actual. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you can see, you can see lobbyists kind of over here and over there, and and uh, um, it's it's something you ought to do someday. You just go up there and have lunch. Yeah. And just you know, you sit there with with Vic or somebody, or or actually Allison was was she saw seek me out. She actually came up in the balcony one day. Um, but, uh, um, and, you know, I, she had, so we had lunch together and she said, well, who's that? Well, that's a lobbyist for this and he's talking to them. And it was, the dynamics of that whole thing was just amazing to me. You, you can see the lobbyist in kind of, there's a hallway between and, two sides of the dining room. And they're looking for a particular person, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're just yeah. sitting yeah, they're there like ready to pounce. Working together to we need to work on this one. And we have such it's, a it's an amazing dynamic here. that you can actually see. And if you actually yeah. wanted to talk to the governor, you can do you that. Can. Oh yeah, you the governor has do open office them. hours. You can walk into the governor's office every Friday morning. It's staggering when you think New York is next to us. How many people in the state of New York do you think get FaceTime with the governor? Like hardly anybody, right? In Vermont, anybody can walk into the governor's office. When I would lived in Montpelier before I lived in Bethel 40 years ago. You would run into Madeline Kuhn and out for lunch every day. You would run into Dick Snell and you would run into the governor all the time. It's just, I just always find that amazing to me. Having grown up in Massachusetts where I never met the governor. You know, it's just so interesting. We, it's, it's amazing access here and I appreciate what you said about the legislature. I've been in there myself lobbying actually for marriage equality years ago and uh, how quickly you have to learn the landscape and who's who and, and how you have to make try to be effective in that role. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Everybody yeah. should go up there. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you ever do, I mean just let me know when you're coming, uh, if it's during the session. because uh, I'm happy to meet you and show you around. Yeah. I lived in Maine for six years, and from 1992 to 98, I worked in the Maine State Legislature in the Senate as a page and a courier. And people, I never knew how much work is involved, because people are like, oh, I'm going to get there, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then like three days later, they'd say, um, I haven't been able to find my committee room yet. <laughs> They're going to change the world, but they can't find their committee room. And there's just so much to it. And yeah, that was that last week, you know, amendment upon amendment, we're running, making copies. Next thing you know, we're having dinner and then it's 10 o'clock. I mean, there was a couple of sessions the second year um, where we didn't get out of session until like 2, 2.30 in the morning. Yep. You yep. know, and then the the senators asked if they could have permission to take their suit coats off yep. because it's like it's too long of a day, it's too hot, and there's just so much involved with it. It's just incredible. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. A, a lot of people don't. I think they just think uh, you elect your legislator. They go up there. They have a few beers. They say, "Hey, I have this bad idea. Let's do that." <laughs> right? You know, and then, uh, that's how it works. But it, that's not how it works. <laughs> And Angus King was governor for part of the time I was up there, and yeah, we would see him walk in the hallways a lot. Yeah. One thing I do like about Maine, though, 
is the governor's position is for four years, mm -hmm. which really makes a lot of sense. That way they've got four years to group, and if the legislators have two, you're not campaigning a year after you start. Yeah. And I would, and then they have a two-year, uh, two-term limit. Oh yeah. So four years, two terms, you're done. Yeah. Um, but a lot more I feel got accomplished because you had a governor that wasn't starting all over from scratch with stuff that was being carried over again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Different systems, pros, cons to all of them, I think. Yeah. So. Uh, Seems like we're out of, I mean, I could, I, I could certainly keep talking about stuff we've been working on, but I don't know if you care or if you don't care. I also really appreciate this, because I think this is pretty rare. <coughs> it's it's yeah. uh, pretty rare um, that a bunch of people can sit around <coughs> hearing each other and depending, regardless of where you are in the political spectrum, anybody is welcome here. Yeah. Very few places, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, I... It's an honor, I think. You know, I mean, I, it's definitely an honor to, to serve a constituency, and you know, and yeah, you know, and and you have to, uh, you know, you have to learn to listen. You have to learn to 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 be able to hear someone who absolutely disagrees one hundred percent with what you <laughs> think, and <clears throat> and to get back to them, you know, and still. Yeah, you know, every once in a while, like I'll get a call or something like that, and I know, you know, the guy, or usually it's a guy, who uh, left the message. I mean, it was mostly a bunch of shouting, and uh, and says, "Call me back," you know, and you're like, "Okay, I'm gonna call him back," you know, <laughs> you know, and, you, know you sort of brace yourself, and and usually, I mean, usually they just have, they're upset, they have some questions, they answer the questions, they go, "Oh, thanks," and and that's how it goes, you know. And uh, uh, people just want to know what's going on. That's why this is so valuable. People just well, want to know. And just clarifying, clarifying things. There's so much disinformation, wrong information yeah. that's out there pushed by one side or the other. And how do you sort that out in your own mind? Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's funny. This last week, I got a call from a, someone in Pittsfield. I don't represent them anymore. Uh, but uh, I got a call from, from a guy in Pittsville, and, uh, and he said, I said, I don't know who to call, so I'm calling you. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that was fine, you know, I called him back. And, uh, uh, and he, what, he was really angry, and I saw actually his thing in the Herald, someone else wrote something too, uh, uh, about that they're, they're redoing this stretch of road. Oh, I, yeah. Don't even go on that one. <laughs> yeah. And you want to know why. And, you know, and, um, and, and so, I, I mean, I just, actually, VTrans has a, if you don't know this, they have a, they have a, a page. Uh, it's, uh, they, they, it, there's, it's, it's called Transparency, right? Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and it lists all the projects that they're, that, that, that they're working on, the projects that they're going to be working on, and you know, and how much was budgeted, what the time frame is, and you know why they're doing it. And so I, t I just looked it up and, and said, well, it's a preventative road maintenance. Uh, you know, they, uh, you know, I said, uh, my understanding is 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 that you know, after, after tropical storm Irene, they put that in. You know, uh, it, you know, it now let's keep it nice rather than you know let it turn into. To nothing, um, and uh, so uh, so that's the, that's the rationale behind it. And he was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I heard a lot of complaining about it and, and that sort of stuff. But it makes sense. Just wait instead of trying to fix it once there's a bunch of potholes and whatever. You got to dig up the whole road. Yeah. If you do a regular maintenance on these things, and and then you aren't shutting the road down for weeks on end, it okay. makes a whole lot of sense. And it's <coughs> amazing how quickly they, they, they're going all the way to 107, I think. I mean, uh, 100, yeah, right? Yeah. It's it, and it's always and cheaper to maintain things than to wait till it breaks. Yeah. yeah. That's true at the town level, too. Yeah, because you're recycling the, the yeah. car and the whole yeah. nine yards. I think, it's, I, I think it's a lot smarter than a lot of things they yeah. do. Yeah, but those I get those calls. Yeah. Somebody just wants to yell at me about the roads. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. On a completely different subject. Yeah. 
uh, how we vote and how we count. Uh, there have been conversations about rank choice. Mm -hmm. There have also been some things in front page forum recently about plurality, which is a different measure. It's a you if you you go in and you vote for as many candidates as you want. Like this is the and it's not not ranked, and the per at the end of the day, the person with the most votes wins. So we count exactly the same way. It, we don't have any fancy whatever, and it it enables you to vote for the progressive or the Democrat or you vote for both of them and the person that gets the most votes wins. Period. And, and uh, it's just a, a different way of thinking about how we do it. It's much simpler. Uh, instead of vote for one candidate, you say vote for the candidates of your choice and go from there. Uh, it's, it, it's something to think about, at least to put on uh, legislators. Yeah. I, I know that there was a bill for ranked choice, and I don't know if the, any of the plurality stuff got into it. I, it. And that would have gone to government operations. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. And, and I don't know, I don't know where it went. Or what or happened with it, right? I, and, but I know that there are those conversations going on, and I just want to call to attention, well, to everybody. There is another way of doing, I call it rank choice, but it, you don't have to rank. You don't have, this is my first, my second, my third. You just vote for the people you believe you could support, and the person with the most votes wins. We count the same, we vote the same, the ballots look the same. You change one word and everybody, everybody's opinion is fully accounted for. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah. I do have to get going. It's almost nine. I, I, yeah, I, I know your nice. clock is 10 minutes fast. <laughs> I've talked to them about that. They're happy with it. They like it that way. <laughs> so, uh, but th thank you. And uh, thank you very much. We we'll really be, appreciate we'll your do this back to in doing January. this every month with us. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, is there a way to make these things a little easier for you guys? To, to attend these? Yeah. To, yes. Is there something that. I mean, asked about different times of day, if it would be better if it wasn't early, if it was later in the day or something. And I think we, we settled back here, but we can change all that. I mean, I, I have no idea what Dick Allison and Becca, how, what, they're, what they would say to that. But I mean, this works fine for me because. Well, but you, you know, don't be we, on the hill we, as yeah, we opposed to, well, I guess most, most of them are pretty close to Bethel, actually, in the compared to Windsor County. Yeah. We're, we're uh, you know, during the legislative session, we have, we have, generally, we have Mondays off. So, so that, why that, that's why this is the day. Uh, and, and, you know, I'd rather have it early so that I can go mow the lawn, uh, or whatever. Uh, probably not, probably not in January. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but have it earlier rather than later, because it just, you start your day out. Well, like today. You've got other you things, other things to do. Yeah, I mean, I live do. here, and then Whether I have, have my day job until 12, and then I drive up to Montpelier and stay there till they tell me I can go home. And, uh, yeah. When does the new session start? When's the new session start? Yes. Uh, it's basically the first Tuesday in January. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's when. Now, yeah, there will be, there are always study committees and special special committees that are working on stuff over the summer they they're only they, they try to limit those uh, quite a lot because people get a d per diem pay and so they have you know and they have a budget and so they can't go over that budget or and so they so they try and limit so but I, I'm guessing there probably will be a 
child care, the child care committee will probably continue to, to meet like once a month or something like that until, until January. Uh, I think, uh, I think my committee is also going to be, um, we were, uh, we've been working on a data privacy bill. Uh, and, uh, and data privacy is super complicated in part, in, in part because it interfaces with the, the federal, you know, uh, intercommerce, uh, interstate commerce uh, laws and, and a whole bunch of other pieces. So we're, we're working on a data privacy bill that will probably, we, we put a bunch of work into it this session and we realized we just don't have enough time to, to get it across the So line. we'll probably so, start getting together again in December and before the session starts, so we can hear what the you know what kind of activity went on outside the session with these different studies yeah. and where our senators and rep bar, what their mindset is going into the session, what their focuses are, that kind of stuff. We did that this year, and we'll probably do that again. Yeah, it's starting in December. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. So, but yeah. So that. So well, yeah. Yeah. one other pet peeve: we don't teach civics in school. Anymore and I know, oh. and, Dick, and almost every session, Dick puts in a bill to, <laughs> to require it. Uh, and this year, I signed on to a bill to require it, and I don't know, I don't know what the block is, why, where that, why that mm. never advances, because they should. Yeah, and I don't, I don't. Yeah, we, we all grew up with it. I, I mean, what, why, why, why do people not want to have it? Yeah. I don't I, understand. I don't understand that. I mean, there's not enough hours in the day to teach civics when we. Well, I think. I think. Yeah. I think. Uh, uh, what, I, I think the answer is, is. Is yeah. Is that the agency education says we have all these other things you have to learn, and and we don't have room for it in the curriculum. But it so that. But to me, that seems like that would be well, like a most one of the most fundamental things if you're going to be a citizen in the in. The country, you need to understand how the machine works. Uh, but so I, I don't see why they don't. But there could be, you know, you have to take U.S. history, right? I, I don't know what the requirements I, are. I, I thought when I was anymore. in school, you had to take U.S. <laughs> but, history. Yeah. It could be part of, you know, a yeah. little piece of that component. Or, you know, there's a whole lot of others. So it could even be, man, and doesn't have to be mandatory, but just have it available yeah. to. to and I, I, I think yeah, yeah, I don't know <laughs> why, but yeah, I definitely support that we have that. Well, I mean, while I'm complaining about things, I also think you ought to have some something to about money. We yeah. teach kids how to spend money. We don't teach them how to save money. We don't explain them to them about how the stock market works or how buying a house works or buying a. Yep. Fifty thousand dollar truck for seven years, and and basically you're stuck where you are for seven years. And you got out of high school and got the seven year mortgage on a truck, and you can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that, no, I'm I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some of that goes to parents too. I gotta say thank you. I I don't come with a lot to say, but I enjoy hearing what you guys are doing. I also gotta say. Thank you to three selectmen, or I can't say selectmen, select board members <laughs> who come and listen to inform our town too. So Denise yeah. and Jean, you're still here. Dave's gone, but it's good to have them here too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, I mean, I may be biased, but I think Bethel's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because we have, we have I such an so. engaged citizen. Yeah. We go to a select board meeting and say yeah. what's on our mind. Too. Yeah. If only people would. I know. Yeah. Go and say what's on your mind. We would love to have you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you all. And thank you, sir, for doing your duty. <laughs> <laughs>